This little transistor radio from around 1959 contains a secret, a key that unlocks the answer to what happened to us. What happened to the American economy, an economy that once created the richest middle class in world history? Yes, this little radio was a turning point of historic importance to the U.S. economy. Made around 1959, this radio was branded Bulova, and it was made in... Well, here's the thing. It doesn't say where it was made. Now, in America, if a product doesn't say on the outside of it where it was made, then it was made in the USA. Because in America, only products made outside of the U.S. are required to say so on them. This is a regulation. And, you know, a lot of businesses hate government regulation. And Bulova especially hated this one, because they believed that in 1959 that many of their customers would reject this radio if it had the words made in Japan on it. You see, Japanese goods were, at that time, considered by a lot of Americans to be cheap and substandard in quality. This belief was rooted in lingering resentment over World War II, exacerbated by remembered war propaganda ginned up in that effort. It's hard to turn that sort of thing off, so such feelings lingered in the popular culture after the war, the way negative stereotypes always do. And the stereotype was useful to those who would exploit it, American corporations cynically used it to persuade people to buy American, and this is where propaganda slides ever so easily into advertising, so that no one quite knows the difference. So Bulova, a high-end brand sold in jewelry stores, would rather leave that Made in Japan off the radio it was planning, thank you very much. But there was that pesky regulation known in U.S. law as the Tariff Act of 1930 that required that, quote, every article of foreign origin imported into the U.S. shall be marked with its country of origin, end quote. But what if, Bolivar says to itself, what if we had the radio's chassis built for us inexpensively in Japan, and we brought those chassis into the U.S. in bulk, then assembled them here into American-made radio cabinets. Could we then call them American-made radios and not have to say made in Japan, even if the entire works of the radio were indeed made in Japan? And that appears to be what they did. Although it can be argued that the cabinet, too, appears to have been made in Japan. But Bulova isn't saying. The radio is officially made in the USA. Did Bulova cheat people with a chassis that was a cheap piece of junk? No, they didn't. And it wasn't. Notwithstanding the stereotype, this was a quality radio made by the respected Japanese firm Matsushita, makers of a brand that would later become well-known and respected worldwide, Panasonic. I refer to the decision by Bulova to source this radio in Japan as a historical turning point, and here's why. In the new economic doctrine of the time called market fundamentalism, or neoliberalism, it was considered right and proper for free market capitalism to exploit lower wages in the Far East to build things, then turn right around and sell those things back into the home country, even if that meant the destruction of jobs in that home country even if that meant the destruction of whole industries in that home country. 
What ensued in the next decades under neoliberalism was a massive shift in wealth upwards to the already rich. Neoliberals in the government slashed the top income tax rate from 91% under Eisenhower to 37% today. And we wonder where our inequality problems come from. Neoliberal doctrine hollowed out the American middle class by design as jobs went overseas, and the American dream, once a reasonable hope for all, became impossible for most. So nobody believes in neoliberalism anymore, right? Well, no. Our political parties will blame each other for the results of this economic policy, but both Republicans and Democrats have long supported it, and support it still. You have to look outside the two-party duopoly to find anyone opposed to it. This pervasive neoliberal doctrine has flown under the radar for most of us all this time. Admit it. You never even heard the term until just recently. But it was never hidden. It was given voice most publicly in the United States by economist Milton Friedman, beginning in the 1950s. By the late 50s, many American companies and entire industries began using the new economic theory to justify offshoring production to the Far East and in doing so to maximize profit at any cost, even the sustainability of their own companies. They ditched the public good for shareholder value and short-term profit. When I first became aware of this theory in the early 1970s, I'm ashamed to say I became a firm believer. After all, Friedman won a Nobel Prize in 1976. Neoliberalism was embraced by Ronald Reagan in 1980 and became a core tenet of his presidency. Friedman preached his free market fundamentalism to the American public in this book, which we lapped up in 1980, making it a bestseller. These policies, we were told, would lead to everyone being better off. All we had to do was make the rich better off first. Then all the goodies would trickle down to the rest of us. Opposing voices were shouted down, as they usually are, in the mainstream press and labeled old-fashioned or socialist. After a while, it seemed that no one was opposed, and neoliberalism became the future. Well, here we are in the actual future, and most corporations and the elites who run them still believe in that economic theory even after the damage it has so obviously done to countless American cities and towns, boarded up and desperate. Neoliberalism remains the dominant economic policy today in America. It's the system of choice for the 1%, almost all of whom look at our economy with smug satisfaction and say to the rest of us, what? To the 62% of us living paycheck to paycheck, they shrug their shoulders and say, what? In this video, we talked about what happened to so many of the American consumer electronics companies after neoliberalism. Most turned to the ever more lucrative business of death, making weapons and the toys of war to feed the military-industrial complex. So today, America doesn't make radios or TVs or even many essential pharmaceutical drugs. Oh, but we make guns. Bulova didn't follow that path. 
The company, which began as a jeweler and watchmaker in New York in 1875, remained primarily a watch and clockmaker. When they began selling radios and other electronics in the mid-20th century, they didn't open their own factories to make these goods. Instead, they contracted with existing electronics manufacturers to produce these items for them. And this is the reason Bulova was so quick to offshore production of their radios to Japan in response to the new regime of neoliberalism. Without any domestic radio factories, they had, they figured, nothing to lose if they offshored production to Japan. So what eventually did happen to Bulova? Are they still around? Well, after a fashion, yes. The company, so quick to embrace the new international free market capitalism, found itself eventually the victim of it, as they themselves were acquired in 2008 by, of all people, a Japanese company. And so Bulova, the once dominant American watchmaker, is now a unit of Japan's citizen watch. Yeah, Bulova, you keep flying that flag. So you see, this is one historically important little radio, since it illustrates so perfectly the dawn of neoliberalism and the turning point in the American economy. You could say that this is the face of neoliberalism, the radio supposedly American-made that shipped American jobs overseas and lied about it. I talk of this radio as if I could hold it to account for what it did, but we're never going to get an apology out of a radio. And we're damned sure not going to get an apology out of Friedman, or Reagan, or Clinton, or anyone else. If past comments on my videos are any indication, some of you are going to get out your American flags right about now and start waving them around and start insulting Japan and China. No! They didn't do this to us. Our corporations, controlling our government, did this to us. If we keep re-electing the politicians those corporations own, do we really deserve any better? <laughs>